Okay, I think I may just live up to the quickie portion of the title this time round. I've played games where some particular aspect bothered me enough to give up on the whole thing, and I don't think I'm alone in that. So long as you're honest about what bothers you and acknowledge that it's not going to be the case for everybody, that's fine. I don't think I'll get many arguments this time round, however. Some games might abandon genre defaults in pursuit of something new, for better or worse, and some games simply fail to pull off the fundamentals. Silence in Space is in the latter category, I'm afraid. Everything looked so promising to begin with. Pixel graphics, horror themes, low price, good things all. But it rapidly fell apart once I started playing. The story puts you in the shoes of Alan Blake, a space mercenary who happens upon an abandoned ship. And then the story stops. Nope, wait, it was just a blank screen for no reason. Right, carry on. We the audience are told that an exploration vessel was bound for the planet Antares. Four days into the mission, all communications are lost and the ship goes missing. It's now ten days since the mission started and our boy Blake happens upon a ship matching the missing vessel's type with no distress beacon, no response on communications, nothing. Being the enterprising fellow he is, he decides to jump on board to see if there's anyone he can help or, more honestly, if there's anything of value he can swipe. The words get out written in blood serve as the first clue that something weird is going on. And yet Mr Blake presses on, he has to find something that'll make this stop worth the trouble. To the game's credit, there's a lot of background information on the ship's mission and crew that you can read, which I'm obviously not going to show much of for spoiler reasons. My problem with it is that it's all written in the same tone, there's no discernible difference between the way a military directive is written versus a page of someone's diary. It's all in a strangely informal type of prose, demonstrated by the ship's records casually telling us that the commander of the ship got his position because he was a really good cadet. Pretty sure there's a fair few ranks between those two, but hey. That's not the fundamental flaw I mean though, just something I thought was a bit odd. The big bad flaw of Doom and Death is the movement is effed. It is effed in the B, V and E. If there's one thing I expect from a point and click game, it's that clicking on a hotspot will do something. And I don't mean in a give the player as much feedback as possible type of way, I mean literally anything. Either this game doesn't register me clicking on a door half the time, or it is very picky about where I click. I shouldn't have this much trouble moving from one spot to another, it's barely even something you should have to think about. Not to mention that you can't always tell where you came into a room. Sometimes you're posted by the door and that makes sense, sometimes you spawn near the bottom for no adequately explained reason. Bit of a problem when corridors start looking the same. The worst one was where I went through a crack in time and space. No, I don't know either, I get that it's a Doctor Who reference, I just don't know why it's there. So I enter this crack, read a flyer, pick up a circuit, come back through, and I was left standing next to the crack I had walked through in the first place. Right, makes sense so far. Problem is, the game does this thing where the character moves in an arc when he's turning around. Cute feature, but I'm facing away from the door I want to move through. So our hero turns in a little arc and goes right back through the goddamn crack again. Except this time he's punted over to the opposite side of the screen. And I can pick up the circuit again on my way back. The circuit I already have. I basically had to trick the game into sending my character in the direction I wanted. Doesn't stop there either. If I click on an item, I expect the character to walk over and interact with it. Half the time, the game will have me walk over and stand there like a total plank, like it's waiting for me to confirm my action or something. That's when he actually makes it over there. It's almost as if the game waits until you're vertically aligned with the object and then stops, so you need to move your boy to the side before clicking on the object, like you need a run up or something. And do you know how long you have to wait to find out if your boy will do the thing when he's finished walking? That long. I know that's the maximum because every room on the ship has the same layout and some of them start to look practically identical. I was getting Orion conspiracy flashbacks after a while. That's when you can actually find the hotspots anyway. Some of them are in quite odd locations. That ominous warning back at the beginning for example. You'd think clicking anywhere on the window would be enough to examine it, but no. This one little pull on the right here, that's the obvious choice for your one and only hotspot. Uh, I might as well get the rest of my gripes out of the way before I move on. I'm not entirely sure how the inventory works. You can select an item that's in your inventory. In fact, you can select multiple items in your inventory for some reason. But because there's next to no feedback to the player, I don't know if I'm able to combine items or use a combination of items on another object or whatever. Hell, you only get a description if your character decides to give one when he picks it up. I managed to use a pass card on an access panel purely by standing next to it and selecting the access card. And probably the biggest one, it feels like the game forgets you've done stuff. Not merely 
return to room pick up item again example from earlier, I had a puzzle unsolve itself and whilst that could be pretty cool if there were a plot related reason, I don't think that's the case here. Even worse, you could end up in an unwinnable state if you didn't write down the information you needed that you can only access while the power is on. No save games to help you out here either, all the main menu gives is new game, continue and quit. Fun fact, if you've never started a new game and you click continue, it starts playing some music every time you click it, on top of any music that's already playing. Not that it matters that much, if you have started a game before it might spawn you without any items. Because why would you want to do anything but play this from the beginning, right? What I'm trying to say is that Silence in Space, or Silence in THE Space according to the window title, is a buggy mess. Shame too, because I still love that art style. Reminds me of Gods Will Be Watching if anyone remembers that. The tone those graphics set along with the music, even if there's like two tracks in the whole game. Oh, okay, that's basically all the trailer could tell me and that's all the good points. Even if they fix the movement, they've still got this strange writing style to deal with as well as the pointless references messing with the horror tone. At £2 I guess you get what you pay for, but this was borderline unplayable for me. And I even found a nitpick to throw in here as well. You have to explicitly click on a dialogue box to skip lines instead of, say, a keyboard shortcut or simply clicking anywhere like in other games. It wouldn't bug me so much but you can't do anything else while dialogue is showing so it feels remarkably pointless. At least you're not meant to be able to do anything while dialogue is showing but yeah. It's not as if there's nothing here though so maybe things will work out better in a sequel. Or in Season 2. I have no idea why a £2 one hour game has the suffix season 1, but that's the least of my questions. It might look like I'm punching down a little here, especially since the game appears to be the work of one person, but they're charging cold hard currency for it, and the price ain't worth it. But hey, at least you get some achievements and trading cards. Hey there, thanks for watching to the end. Feel free to let me know how I did with a like, a dislike, a comment, or by sharing this with a friend. And if you feel like my work is worth a few dollars a month, I do have a Patreon. Thanks again, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.